Hello and welcome to Apex Math. In today's video we are going to explore how to solve exponent equations when we have the same numerical base. These are types of questions you would commonly see in a Common Core Math 2 class or an Algebra 2 class or sometimes even in a, an Advanced Function and Modelings class or possibly a pre-calculus class. Okay, so we are going to start off looking at something very simple like 2 to the x equals 2 to the fifth. So if we are solving an equation like this, note that this is called the base and this is called the exponent. And so this is the base, and this is the exponent. And we need to find out what x is, and if we know, x is up here in the exponent position. Now anytime we're solving for x, and it's in the exponent position, we have a couple different ways we can solve it. We can look for a way to create the same base across our equation, or we can use logarithms. And in this particular lesson, we are going to simply solve it using the same base. Now that's not always possible. If I had 2 to the x equals 10 to the fifth, there's no way I can make the same base out of a 2 and a 10. So I would not be able to solve the problem using this approach. But when you have numbers that can be created out of the same base, that's a nice, easy approach to use. So in this case, we have 2 to the x equals 2 to the fifth. So obviously, if we had 2 to the fifth, it's going to equal 2 to the fifth, because anything is equal to itself. So therefore, it makes sense to say that x could be 5, since if we put a 5 up here, then these two things are identical. So x is equal to 5. So the shortcut here is that if we have the same base on both sides, we can just cross off those bases and set the exponents equal to each other and solve the equation. All right, so let's say we have 2 to the x plus 1 is equal to 2 to the 8th. So again, we have the same base, so we can just cross off these bases and pretend they're not even there, and we can just say, well, what does x plus 1 need to be here in order to get 8? What would we need to solve for for x? So we can subtract 1 from both sides and find out that if x is 7, then you can see here 7 plus 1 turns that into an 8. 2 to the 8th is equal to 2 to the 8th, and our problem works. So the value is equal to x plus 7. So those are the most simplistic cases that we could work with. Now, if we wanted to get a little bit harder, let's look at 2 to the x equals 8. Now, in this case, you can see that our bases are not the same. We have a 2 and an 8. But if we look at the smaller of the bases here, 2, 2 can be if rewritten as 2 to the first. But if we look at 2 squared, that is equal to the value of 4. And 2 to the third is equal to the value 8. So I can rewrite one of these numbers here as a number that has the same base as the other number. So 8 can be rewritten as 2 to the third. So now I have it set up. I'm just rewriting 8 as 2 to the third. And now it's one of those easy problems again. x is equal to 3 because I ignore these bases now that they're the same, and I am done. 
So what if I had 4 to the x is equal to 8? Well, there's no way I can write 4. If I do 4 to the first, I get 4. If I do 4 squared, I get 16. There's no right way to write 4 to a power and get 8. But I can know that both of these can be written as 2 to a power. So I really have to know my powers here. So 4 is 2 squared and 8 is 2 to the third. So I can rewrite both of these as a power of 2. So I'm going to write 4 as 2 squared and then I still have that x there. So he's going to sit there. So the 4 has become 2 squared and there's the x and the 8 is now 2 to the third. So my equation, cross off these 2's, becomes 2x, oops, 2x equals 3, divide by 2. So x is equal to 3 over 2. So sometimes I need to figure out what base I can use to make them have the same base. All right, let's look at another example. Let's say we have 2 to the 4x is equal to 8 to the x plus 1. Now I've just made my exponents a little bit more complicated. But I can see that I have a 2 and an 8, so I know I want to use the base 2. So I go over here and I say, well, 8 can be rewritten as 2 to the 3rd. So I'm going to rewrite this 8 as a 2 to the third. But anytime I do that, if this guy here is a polynomial, which means he has a plus in there, he's not just a binomial, like this guy, I can just stick a number in front and multiply it. But I want to put parentheses. You can just get in the habit of putting parentheses no matter what's there, and that will make it always work. So you want to make sure that that gets parentheses so that you can distribute. So now I have 2 to the 4x, because he didn't change, is 2 to the 3rd, and then the x plus 1 was already there. So the only tricky part here is remembering those parentheses. Now I can cross off those bases, and the equation that I'm solving is 4x is equal to 3 times x plus 1. So if I distribute here, I get 4x is equal to 3x plus 3. And subtracting 3x from both sides, I get x is equal to 3. All right, let's try another one. What if we have... 5x is equal to 1 over 25. Now, if you look at the numbers that we have here, we have a 5 and we have a 25. I can easily see that a 25 can be rewritten as a power to 5. I know that 5 squared is 25. But what's different here? is that I have a fraction. A fraction just tells you to use a negative exponent. So you do everything the same except you're going to use that negative exponent. So he is going to be 5 to the x and he's going to be that 5 squared except because he's 1 over 25 I'm going to make him not 5 squared, but 5 to the negative 2. That negative right there is because of the fraction. So that's something to make note of, that anytime you put a 1 over a number, you need to use a negative exponent. 
Now I can cross off. I have the same bases. So x is equal to negative 2, and I am done. All right, let's take that same one and just make it a little bit more complicated. Let's say we have 5 to the x times 25 to the x plus 1 equals 1 over 25. So I can see that I want to use the fact that 5 squared is 25. So this guy isn't going to change at all. He's going to stay 5 to the x. This 25 is going to become a 5 squared. And remember, because he's a binomial, I have to use those parentheses. And this guy, because he's a fraction, I have to use the negative exponent. All right, so those are the two key things that we have to remember here, is these parentheses had to be remembered, and this negative sign had to be remembered. All right, now we have one other thing going on here. We have two terms here that are multiplied together. If you remember, when we multiplied exponents, we had x squared times x to the third. The rule was we added the exponents if this had the same base. So since these have the same base, I'm going to add those exponents together. So I can still cross off all my bases, but this multiplication here is not going to be that I multiply these two things. Because when I deal with exponents, multiplication converts into adding of the exponents. So this becomes this equation. If you want to do it in the step before and convert this into a 5x plus 2 times x plus 1 equals 5 to the negative 2 before you cross off the bases, you can do that if that's easier. Let's go ahead and erase to give us some more room here. And we will solve our equation. So we have x plus distributing 2x plus 2 equals negative 2. x and 2x are like terms, so we're going to combine them to be 3x. So 3x plus 2 equals negative 2. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. So I get 3x equals negative 4. Divide by 3. Divide by 3. So x is equal to negative 4 over 3. And that's my final answer. All right. That is our last problem that we are going to work on. So the things we're going to remember here is that we need to convert when we see uh, a number like 4. Remember, 4s are powers of 2. 8s are powers of 2. So look for your powers of 2. Um, look for your powers of 3. Remember, 3 squared is 9. If you see 27, that's 3 to the third. Um, remember that when you see 1 over a number, 1 over 27, that would be 3 to the negative 3. And we're going to put that negative sign in front whenever we see a fraction. And if we have 5 or 25, let's say, to the x plus 7, then when we convert that, we got to remember to put the parentheses in. That's 5 squared, but we have parentheses x plus 7. And then the last tip was that if we had two things multiplied together, if we have 2 to the x times 2 to the x plus 4, then this times here means to add the exponent. So this is 2 to the x plus x plus 4. Because when you multiply, you add the exponents. So hopefully this lesson helped you make 
your exponents when you're solving with the same base more clear. And remember that anytime you're solving when there is a variable up in that exponent position, there are two options. One is to look for the same base. The other option is to use logarithms. So you can't always use this process here. If you can't convert it to the same base, you have to use logs, and that will be in another lesson. So thank you very much for visiting Apex Math. Please like our videos and let us know if there's any other future videos you'd like to see.